Let me ask you quickly. I, we haven't talked to you in so long. I want to ask you about your family. Ah, uh, my great family. I yeah. love them all. How's your? Uh, we used to talk in the old days. You and I used to you used to spend some yarns about Uncle Hector. How's Uncle oh, Hector? Oh, Uncle Hector. Uncle Hector. He's Polish too, I'm guessing. No, he wasn't Polish. No, okay. No, he was from my uh, cousin's side of the family, and he was. Uh, he was, uh, he was a great man, my uncle, you know. Right. Uh, he uh, was an old fella. He, he actually uh, uh, rode the rails during the Depression. Oh. You know, he was a hobo. Hobo. As you might uh, call him. I yeah. don't like that term, but whatever. <laughs> tramp or whatever, yeah, what have tramp. you. Railroad bum. <laughs> and, uh, but he wasn't a bum. He was just out. He was a, a good, honest man during the Depression searching for work, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, you know, he had no money, so he'd travel the country trying to find work, and he actually rode the rails, mm -hmm. Uncle Hector. And, uh, and uh, he told me, uh, it was an interesting story, he'd go through, this was in Canada, and uh, there's a, a town called Kitchener in Canada, mm -hmm. and the railroad cops were tough, boy. They were Ooh. tougher, tougher yeah. than real cops, you know. They had a law of their own, the railroad cops. <laughs> I feel like I should be tucked into bed <laughs> listening to you. <laughs> Anyway, a law of their own, those railroad yeah. cops. But there was not a railroad cop tougher than Kitchener Leslie. Oh, boy. He was well known. He was well known for beating hobos to death. Really? Oh, He'd yeah. find a hobo on his train, he beat him to death. He beat him to death. And uh, so what the, uh, the railroad bums would all do is, as Kitchener approached, of course... Oh, hey, I'll, hey Norm, how you doing? So... Um, <laughs> wow, such focus on these stories. That wasn't a mirror, that was a okay. guy. Okay, oh, that was a guy named Maria. Yeah, so uh, 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 the railroad bums would all see hop off before they got to Kitchener right. to avoid being beaten to death by Kitchener Leslie. Yeah. Anyways, my, uh, my uh, Uncle Hector, a good man, you know, and he, he walked into a mine one day. This is a, a story for the, the, that I think the young people could learn from. He, <laughs> this is yeah, don't go mine hopping, kids. Dur during the height of the Depression, where there was absolutely no work, my Uncle Hector walked into, to a, uh, I won't say the name of the mining company, it was McIntyre Mine. And he, <laughs> and he walked in, he had, his, he had his lunchbox with him and his, uh -huh. his, his uh, work boots, and he said, sir, he said, uh, I want a job. And they said, we have no jobs. He said, well, 500 people work here at McIntyre Mine. He goes, uh, uh, I don't think there are 500 men here better than I. Uh, he says, as a matter of fact, I don't think there are 200 men better than I. He says, I, I think you'd be uh, strapped to find a hundred men better than I. And by golly, he got the job. What do that's, you think of that? That's a great story. Yeah. Now, I'm sensing there's more. Now, back to Kitchener Leslie, yeah. the no. most dreaded... No, no, no. Uncle Hector. Uncle Hector. What? No. I'm sorry, I'm Hector. trying to help you out. No, Uncle Hector... Dad, where's this story going? Uncle... Uncle Hector uh, worked in a mine, and it's, yeah. a, it's a hellish job, the mine, as you well know. Uh, you know, uh, darkness, you know? <laughs> it's dank, it's... It's dank. Yeah. It's, it's coaly. It's a lot of... What? <laughs> well, you're in a coal mine. It's you not coaly, it's coal-ridden. It's coal-infested, coal it's not coaly. It's coal-infested. <laughs> so, uh, so he worked in the mine, and by God, he worked hard. And uh, after a week of working hard, he said to the, the shift manager, he said, where? he said, by golly, I'd like to have a lady. I work hard, and, and uh, where, would I find a, where would I find a lady here in town? Well, they said to Uncle Hector, they says, uh, uh, we don't have, uh, we have sex with animals here. <laughs> <laughs> by God, says Uncle Hector, I'm not going to do that. I, why, I'm a, a normal fella. Uh, well, that, then uh, be uh, to, to your own devices then. So... <laughs> Be to your own devices? Yeah. Wow. Uncle, Uncle Hector continued working in the mine. He worked hard, and he worked long, and he worked for a low wage. But he was a man. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and Uncle Hector, after a couple of weeks passed, he, he started to get a little itch, you know, as, as you and I say. Right. You know, he, <laughs> Right, right. When we're, when we're thinking about the... The ladies, The ladies, you know? yeah. And, uh, but he kept it under control. He went again, and he said, Are you sure there's no ladies here? No, we have sex with animals. Ah, oh, my God. <laughs> six, six months passed, and Uncle Hector couldn't take it any longer, he told me. Right. He said, By God, I just had to... Uh, I, I'm just a man. I'm weak, you know? I'm, I'm not a saint, uh, you know? And uh, I, I, was, I was born in sin, I suppose, and I, I, I couldn't resist. I just needed it. So he, so he said he walked uh, by a, a pastor, and there there was a pig. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah. terrible. It's terrible. 
And uh, so Uncle Hector said, well, uh, he, he said, I walked up and I, I began having sex with a pig. <laughs> and he said, uh, all of a sudden, he saw all the miners like around him, you know, looking at him. They go, Uncle Hector, oh, what the hell are you doing over there? And Uncle Hector's like indignant. He's like, what? Well, you, you're the guys that told me that, uh, that uh, you have sex with animals. They're like, Uncle Hector, you damn fool. That's Kitchener Leslie's girlfriend. <laughs> Sex you don't want to have sex yeah, not with Kitchener Leslie's pig. No, that's terrible. Not Kitchener Leslie's pig. Kitchener Leslie's lady. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you tell quite a yarn, man. Well, I had shorter ones, but. No, I tell you why it's funny, man. Because I was in, I was in uh, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. I met a good old boy down there, and he said, uh, "Have you ever?" He said, "You know Andy Richter?" Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he did. Yeah. You met a guy in Georgia, and he said, "You know Andy Richter?" Oh yeah, you do guys do well there. Oh. And he said, uh, "I said yeah." He said, "Have you ever heard an Andy Richter joke?" I said, "No." He said, "Well, most of it's based on him being a Swedish German." <laughs> And then he told me an Andy Richter joke. And really? I, but I didn't know he was Swedish German. I thought it was all nonsense. Yeah, well, now this lines up perfectly. Yeah. Let me ask you something, because it sort of relates to the first... Wait, don't you want to hear the joke? <laughs> no. Oh, you're down to six. <laughs> you're down to six. All right, this joke will get you back yeah, up. You can get him back. Okay. Let's hear the joke. Well, the fellow says, he says, man, he says, you ever tear the time about the old prospector? That's how he tells you. Know? Yeah. He says, uh, <laughs> he says, man, there was an old prospector, and he was a uh, prospector for gold, and he was having a hell of a time getting any gold. <laughs> it was an empty stake, I, I believe. And uh, he said he'd come into town one day. He'd been, he'd been in the mine for a good eight months. He said, by God, he said, I'm only, I'm only flesh and blood. Sure. Yeah. And I need, I need a woman, you know. And so he goes into town. He goes up to the bartender. He says, bartender, he says, man, I've been in that mine for a hell of a long time, and I'm only flesh and blood. I need a woman. Well, the bartender says, hell, there ain't no women in this town. If you want to do any of that business, all we got is Andy Richter, the Swedish German. <laughs> the prospector, he says, no, no. He says, hell, I ain't into that funny stuff, you know. He says, I'll be fine. I, so he goes back to his state, you know, and he's back in that mine, man, and six months passes, mm -hmm. and a year passes, and Conan, you know, people are weak. Man is made of flesh and pride, as the scriptures tell us, and by God, that old prospector finally broke to his knees, and he said, I'm no worse than over than he went back to the bar. Yeah. <laughs> He was a beaten man. He says to the bartender, he says, hell, man, I've been in that place two and a half years. A man has needs. And if you say there's no women in this here town, he says, well, I'll have to go for Andy Richter, the Swedish German. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> But he says, listen now, he says, man, I'm a tough old hombre, you know, and I got friends now. He says, I don't want anybody to know about this. You know, this is back in the old days. Sure, right? yeah. He says, uh, I, can, I, can, I can tell by the accent, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he says, I got my cowpoke friends and so forth. I'd hate to hell anybody know about this, you know. This got to be all secret. Nobody. I say, nobody can know about this. Bartender says, well, four people will know about it. How do you figure that? He says, well, he says, I'll know about it. He says, you'll know about it. Andy Richter, the Swedish German, will know about it. And the feller that has to hold down Andy will know about it. <laughs> where, where, why? Why? Because Andy Richter, the Swedish German, <laughs> he don't go for that funny business neither. Uh, well, at least you left me my dignity. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I like the way that story ended. Yeah, that was a nice. Were, you weren't gay. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, but that's not beside the point. You were raped. I, I would, no, it's more. <laughs> it's more that I wasn't 
prostituting myself. Exactly. That's just, what I was getting. You're such exactly. a horrible <laughs> man. <laughs> no, I, no, you were, I got all I got a cable, but it's still valuable airtime. <laughs> Well, no, I, no, I don't know about that. You know, in no. Georgia, they say there's a whole subgenre of uh, Andy, the uh, Swedish German <laughs> joke. <laughs> The guy told me. Well, you know what? I asked you, how are you? Yeah? And you went into, a, I believe, a 48 minute joke. Oh, which I'm sorry. It was fantastic, but now we have to take a commercial break. Are you kidding me? What you, yes! Uh, now, listen, we want to talk about your uncle, because every time you come on the show, you have a story about your uncle who lives up in Canada. Oh, yeah, he's a Frenchman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? And you always have, like, a little story Jean about him. Jean, Jean Luc. Luc. Oh, yeah, he's a crazy character, that dude. He originally visited New York City. Hello? <laughs> I'm just having a drink. I can listen to you and have a drink. It's not like I went like this. Hold it. Ooh. Ah, liquid. Huh? I'm still here. Let's see if I got this right. You've got an uncle, lives up in Canada, named Jean-Luc. Jean Occasionally he visits. Once, the time he visited New York. <laughs> so I, I'm living in New York, you know? And uh, Jean-Luc, I, I am excited. Jean-Luc's going to come by, my crazy Frenchman uncle. So he gets in the cab, right? When he gets to the airport. Yeah, when he gets to the airport, the cab driver picks him up, and the cab driver says to him, Hey, Frenchman, he says, uh, <laughs> he says uh, you know, he says, uh, do you like uh, riddles, you know? So my uncle Jean-Luc, is like, ah, oh, yes, I love the riddles. That's how he talks. <laughs> he goes, I like nothing better than a riddle. So <laughs> the cab, he's like, all right, here's one, right? So he's, here's the riddle. His brothers and sisters, I have none, but this man's father is my father's son. So my, uh, uh, my uncle goes, ah... <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Right? <laughs> so the cabbie goes, uh, it's me. It's me. Oh, yeah. Makes oh, sense. Oh, he thinks about it. Oh, my God. He says, that's a good uh, riddle there. He says, I have to tell my wife, Mary Claire, when I get back to Gaspé. That's where he lives, Gaspé. Right. So uh, he's like, uh, take me back to the airport. And the cabbie's like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> the cabbie's like, I thought you wanted to go visit Norm then. No, no, no. I go back to the airport. All right. You know, I have to tell Mary Claire. Seems odd, right? Right. Gets back on the plane, flies all the way back home there to uh, Gas Bay. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets back, right? Runs in the door. Mary Claire, Mary Claire, let's move. You know, where are you, Mary right. Claire? Uh, come on down here. I have a riddle for you. She goes, Oh, Jean Luc, I love the riddle. She's a woman, high voice. <laughs> So, uh, Michael Jackson was visiting. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, uh, oh, you're going to love this riddle. How was New York? Forget about that. I got the riddle. Uh, brothers and sisters, I have none. But this man's father, he is my father's son. She goes, oh, I don't know. Who is it? Some cab driver back in New York. <laughs> I Be honest, you didn't mean to I do didn't that. at all. I just got to the end. <laughs> that guy, man, I always tell my uncle, you shouldn't curse him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to pick up the pieces. Yeah. And Albert Fish was born on this day in New York City in 1870. Do you know the obituaries is concerning me? I'm a little right. worried because people are dying in alphabetical order. <laughs> who, who the fuck is Albert Fish? What? Who the fuck is Albert Fish? Oh, Albert Fish? I've never heard of that guy. He was known as the Gray Man. The Grain Man? The Gray oh, the Man. Gray man. The, the Werewolf of Wisteria. I, um... Yeah. You know why he was known as the Gray Man? Because when they... He was a serial killer. He, uh -huh. ki he yeah. killed... He, he slayed children and ate yeah. them. He was a cannibal. Uh-huh. But when they, the police asked a, a woman to describe him, and she said he was gray Man. in both appearances and demeanor. Mm. Very bad mm. description. This is like Arsenio when it was woo. Yeah, was, woo. I, but anyways. I'm pretending I know who Albert Gray is. I didn't. No, no, Albert Fish. Oh. You're a New Yorker.
So anyways, he was a child rapist and cannibal, as I explained. When he's a child Jesus rapist, you try not Christ. to laugh when he looks at you. Oh, come on, like... man. <laughs> it's not funny. I know it's not. But I know, you, but I know you want people to laugh. <laughs> but say, well, Fish whatever. boasted that he had children in every state. Now, I would not boast about that. I don't think you would. I don't think... I don't think you'd do it, but if you did do it, you certainly wouldn't boast about it. You, you'd keep the, take that to the grave with you. But he boasted. But they anyway, say they eventually so, all sing like a canary. They, they do say that? About murder as well. Yeah, yeah, right. they, they, they brag to a friend. To caught, right. yeah. When Norm bragged... Oh, sh sorry. But Fish, this is interesting, Fish chose his victims. He only chose victims who were either mentally handicapped. Now, don't laugh at this next part. <laughs> Please. But you know he wants you to, right? No. If you laugh at this next part. Okay. And I'm not Fish chose victims who were either mentally handicapped or African American. Oh, come on. Why would you think that's funny? God damn, Fred. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That was the worst part of the story. Okay. But why do you think he did that? What would be the explanation? Why would he only attack? Why, why would his victims that he chose only be either mentally handicapped? Or African Americans. Because people don't in those days didn't care when those people were vanished. That's, that's you're right. thinking like right. Albert Fish now. <laughs> and prostitutes. That's why they people kill that's right. prostitutes. Exactly. That's right. that's Nobody right. really cares no. about prostitutes. Well it's like that that comedian that would rape people at comedy club oh no, in colleges. Yes, Vince Champ. They always said his his great gimmick was that people would think who did it and they never because he'd go on to another town. And another college, but yeah. when people say, "What about the comic?" Yeah, mm. maybe the worst gimmick a comic ever had. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but you're exactly right. That's why Albert Fish killed only mentally handicapped <laughs> and <laughs> African Americans. What about? Okay. What I thought you'd laugh at African Americans again that they were. <laughs> no, I guess I know him. I know he'll do something. That's. That's outrageous. How well, it's dare kind you? of outrageous for you. But anyways, uh, Fish tortured, mutilated, and murdered the youngsters. They were children. With a meat cleaver, a butcher knife, and a small hand saw. Hmm. Jesus. God, you... This is the topical portion? Of yeah. This is the birthday. And then he solidified his reputation as the most vicious child slayer in criminal history. Oh, Though you know barely literate, Fish wrote taunting letters to the parents of his victims, gruesomely detailing Jesus. how he slayed, butchered, cooked, and then with great enjoyment dined on their offspring. He would inevitably declare that a child's roasted rump was the most toothsome dish in all of gastronomy. gastronomy. <laughs> Additionally, I, Fish was a masochist. Get this. And he would insert wool doused with lighter fluid into his own anus and set it alight for his own enjoyment. Fish was finally arrested, and he immediately began confessing to killing 700 children. Get out of here. Yes. And he was, he was dizzyingly happy about it. Smiled as he described the grisly details of the tortures and the murders, appearing to the detectives. And one of the detectives said he appeared as the devil himself. I mean, uh, this Albert... The, I mean, this guy was a real jerk. <laughs> now I know there was no Albert Fish. Because right. I would have heard about that. <laughs> 700. Now listen, man, I like the news. You guys like the news? I always watch the news, and I'll tell you something about the news. I don't understand it, <laughs> but it's, for some reason I watch it. I don't even know why, but uh, I think I'm supposed to or something. So I'll watch it, and then the guy will come on, and he'll go, hey, anyways, today the deficit, and I'll go, ah, ha, ha, I've heard that word. <laughs> and the guy goes, today the Na Dow Jones NASDAQ Composite Index is uh, down, and then I go, ah, that's not good. <laughs> Down. Up. I like when it's up. <laughs> That's my opinion on the. <laughs> Seems like there's too much news, like, you know, because now they have. 
24 hour news. Now, when I was a young boy, the news was half a hour. That was the whole news, you know. And a guy would come on and he'd have a tie, you know, and shit. And he would say the news. And it was a half a hour long. Now, it's 24 hours long. Now, it turns out that back in the old days when it was only half a hour, they had it about right. That's about all the news there is. <laughs> Even then, there would always be like a story, a fucking story at the end about a caribou or some horse shit. So <laughs> there wasn't even enough to fill the half a hour. But 24 hours, way too long. So they have to keep repeating stories all the time and everything, and uh, they'll make up stories, you know? They do that a lot, make up things that aren't really news stories, but they have to, you know, fill the 24 hours, you know? And the one I noticed that they make up a lot uh, this is the latest one I've seen. I see this all the time on the news. The newsman will come on and he'll go, he'll go, good evening, everybody. This is the newsman. Whatever he says, he's not going to say that. <laughs> and he goes, our top story tonight, a lady has vanished. <laughs> That's the story. And then he goes, let's go outside where there's another guy. So then they cut to outside. <laughs> And then there's a guy outside and he's like, hey, listen, how's it going inside? <laughs> We're outside and uh, we found out about this lady that vanished. Her name was Janice and uh, they found her car here in the Taco Bell parking lot. And uh, don't worry about the car, it's fine. But uh, can't find hiding her hair of the lady. Well, back to you. <laughs> so, so then you're watching, you go, well, I don't give a fuck on account I never knew Janice in the first place. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm kind of happy it's Janice and not somebody I know. <laughs> but then what they do is they start telling you about Janice, you know? And they go, hey, we got found out some cool things about Janice. And you're like, no, that's cool. I don't want to hear it. They go, no, no, you want to hear it. <laughs> They can't help themselves. So they go, let's go back to Bill. He's, uh, he's uh, still outside. And uh, how's it going, Bill? And Bill's like, it's all right. It's no inside, but it's cool. And uh, <laughs> anyways, we found out about Janice. Turns out she's a good lady. And uh, we found some friends of hers, and here they are. And then sure enough, they show a lady, and it says, friend of Janice. And uh, she says, I'll tell you something about Janice. You want to hear about Janice? Janice is a type of lady that you could always turn to. You know, you ever want to turn to somebody? Like if you got a problem or something, and you, you, know, you, know, you feel like you want to turn? <laughs> you ever do that? Or maybe your neck just hurts and you want to anyways. The point of it is that once you had swiveled your head over this way, the person you'd most want to see in your eye line would be Janice. <laughs> And then they have Jan another friend of Janice that wasn't the first one. And she'll go, I'll tell you, Janice, oh my God. She was the type of lady that she could walk into a room and light up the whole room, you know? And she didn't have a fucking light or nothing like that. She would just somehow, through sheer tyranny of will, she could somehow <laughs> illuminate a room. I don't know. And that'd be Janice's third friend lady that's not one of the earlier two. And then she goes, I'll tell you about Janice. Is that who you're asking about, Janice? <laughs> Janice was the type of lady that you could be talking to your best friend in the whole world. And then Janice come in and you go, fuck you, I'm talking to Janice. Because <laughs> Janice is better than you. Come on, let's face it. She's better than all of us. So anyways, then you're at home and you start liking Janice, you know what I mean? You start getting invested in her, you go, God damn, that Janice is cool lady. I would, I would like to meet her one day. That would be a lot of, fuck, I forgot she vanished. <laughs> ah, just my luck. <laughs> They'll find her. <laughs> then you get hope. That's not good. I don't give a fuck what Obama says. Hope is never good. <laughs> don't try it. it. Never works out. So you go, you go, oh man, they'll find Janice. They're putting pictures up of her on telephone poles. I think that had worked once. And 
and then the news keeps showing you more things about Janice, you know, and they'll show you like the video, home videos of her, you're like, God damn, look at that, she's eating a pizza. <laughs> I like her hair like that. <laughs> they'll find her. And then you become obsessed with Janice. It's all you can think of, you know. You're at work, fucking just can't wait to get home, agonizing over Janice, you know, and thinking about her with eating pizza and shit. And then you go home, and your nights are just a fevered dreams of, you know, Janice and bangs and shit like that. And and you, all you can do is turn on the TV and hope, and you know. And then one day, you know, they go, "Hey, more news on Janice." Here's the bill. He's still outside. And then Bill is like outside, and he's like, "Here we are." Uh, where, as you can see behind me, they are scouring the woods. They're still searching for Janice, you know. And then you go, "Oh fuck, not the woods." You know, that's not. <laughs> Nothing good ever happens in the woods. <laughs> I've seen enough of these fucking stories to know <laughs> that Janice ain't coming bounding out of the woods anytime soon. That's it. It's like, hey, what's going on, everybody? I, I'm just taking a stroll through the woods. What are you taking my picture for? I was just, just I just take a stroll through the scraggly woods. No, if they find you in the woods. They always find you in the same place. Every time they will find you in a uh, shallow grave. <laughs> I don't know why they don't just look there in the first place. But... That's... If I was the police chief, I'd go, listen, I want every shallow grave in the vicinity checked out. I want to clear out this case by Tuesday on account of I'm running for DA or whatever. The... But uh, doesn't shallow grave seem a might rash? You know, if, like these serial killers are supposed to be so shrewd and cunning and everything, you know? At least according to the TV movies I've seen. And, uh, but then when it comes time for the grave, they get a little hasty, you know? <laughs> Oh, like, there you go, three twigs and a leaf. That ought to do it. That doesn't look like Janice anymore. I don't recall Janice ever wearing three leaves and a twig. Oh, well. Guess I'll go home and await the authorities now. You gotta prepare these things, you know? You gotta be a little smarter than that. You know, what I would do, and I would never, ever kill a lady in cold blood. I know I say that now, I don't really know. I, don't, I can't predict the future, but I don't believe. I, I know there's no river long enough doesn't contain a bend, but I believe that right now, and it might just be vanity, I don't think I would, uh, I would kill a woman in cold blood. But if I did, I would plan it out very carefully, you know, because there's a lot at stake. You know, you think about it, you probably, you know, Probably lose your job. I don't know what happens. <laughs> That's a blemish on the old CV, you know? <laughs> Even in today's enlightened society, there remains a stigma to being a uh, psychosexual sadist. <laughs> but uh, what I would do is I would like, I would look at the lady, I would select a lady, and then I would follow her habits. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I would watch her very carefully, you know? And I'd go, hey, I notice that every day she goes to that cheese sandwich shop, and then she comes out with a little paper bag. I'll bet you anything, there's a cheese sandwiches in there. You know? So then I'd keep that in my head, you understand? Then I'd say, hey, I notice every Wednesday evening, she goes with her other lady friends and they go down to the YWCA and they play basketball with each other, which is fine nowadays, you know? <laughs> so, what I would do is, on Wednesday, I would go down to the YWCA and what would I be uh, holding in my right hand in the parking lot but a cheese sandwich? <laughs> 
So then she would eventually come out of the YWCA, you know, all sweaty with her, uh, you know, her ridiculous three-colored ball and everything there, you know. And then I'd be standing there. And then she'd go, hey, what's in your right hand? And I'd go, nothing. I'd be coy, you know. And she'd go, she'd go there's something in your right hand. I'd go, listen, lady, who knows more about what's in their right hand? You or me? I believe, oh, this. Now, this is just a cheese sandwich. Why, you like it or something? What's... I got a whole fucking van full of them over there. Right over there. Yeah, yeah the, that craziest looking fucking van you ever saw? That's filled with cheese sandwiches. You don't have to have cheese sandwiches in the van, by the way. If you're, uh, unless you want to be known for your detailed work. It's not, it's not really necessary. Then I would get the lady in the van and I would drive her to a remote area, an area most known for its remoteness. That's what I would look for. And anyways, I'd take her to the remote area where I had constructed a shed and then I would get her in there and I would do that thing that makes me feel like God. And, uh, and then her screams would just bounce off the walls and echo out into nowhere and never touch the ear of civilized man again. And then I would take her body to the woods and bury her in a very, very, very deep grave. <laughs> 